Hello. Uh, I saw a question on one of the wood turning forums that I frequent uh, that comes up occasionally. Not all that frequently, but uh, primarily when it comes up, it's someone who is not. Uh, is more of a cabinet maker or furniture maker than a wood turner uh, that works uh, their work on the lathe is to make table legs for the table they're building or chair legs for the chair they're building or whatever uh, it's the question was about split turning uh, and uh, it's a technique that is used when you need two identical pieces that are only half round. Uh, if you were making a cabinet and you wanted a half round molding, say on each side of the openings or each side of the doors or something, uh, more as a a decorative piece, uh, but you would need one on each side then, and uh, you wouldn't really want to cut, turn, take a, uh, a square piece, turn it, and then try and cut it, because when you cut it, you, well, one thing is uh, you have the problem of holding it from turning if it's if it's fully round uh, you have the problem of keeping it from rotating as you're cutting it uh, on a bandsaw or a table saw or whatever and then you have a rough sawn surface where you cut it apart and you have to dress those and you lose the material from the saw kerf and and uh, whatever subsequent dressing is required, uh, which would almost have to be by hand, because if that if those pieces are turned, you can't run them through the planer after you cut it. Uh, so, technique, which is uh, handy for that application, and also for say inside out turning is what's called a, a paper joint where you take two pieces that are half the thickness and glue them together with a piece of paper in between mount it on the lathe do whatever turning you require and then split it apart on the paper joint uh, and that get, and then you just have to scrape off the glue and the, and the paper residue and then you have two identical pieces they're identical because they're both turned at the same time and uh, you don't they're each half round they're not uh, only a portion of a round because you didn't lose the material from the kerf when you cut it apart uh, it's a technique that's been around for a long time, and it uh, works quite well. Uh, but a lot of people seem to be a little confused about what kind of paper to use. Um, the ideal weight of paper is brown paper grocery bag paper. That is about the weight of paper that you want to use. Uh, I see some people recommend newsprint, newspaper. Uh, that is too thin and absorbent. If I put glue on these two faces and then cover it with newspaper and then put it together, the glue is going to soak right through the newspaper and uh, 
that joint probably isn't going to be reversed. It's not going to split apart because the glue is going to bond on both sides. Uh, the idea is that you're bonding one face of the paper to one piece and the other face of the paper to the other piece, but there's still un there's still paper material in between that isn't uh, soaked with glue. So when you go to split it apart, that paper that isn't saturated with glue comes apart quite easily and you should get uh, you should get uh, almost an even amount of paper on both sides of the joint. Uh, now I don't actually happen to have any brown paper grocery bags today. Um, so I'm going to try using ordinary note paper just from a, a pad of uh, note paper. Um, I have a feeling that that's verging on being too thin, uh, but we'll find out, I guess. Uh, you don't want to use paper that's too thick either, um, because then there's too much of a there's too much paper that is uh, not reinforced with glue, and that can be a little of a bit, bit of a weak joint, but uh, uh, it would probably be better to use, you don't want to use like uh, card, cardboard like cut from a cereal box or something, that's, that's too thick. But that would probably be better than using newsprint. You would just have to be pretty careful while you were turning it because it could separate on you before you wanted it to. But what I have here is two pieces of wood that I have milled to be, they're exactly, the thickness is exactly half of the width so that when I put them together, it's square. Uh, depending on what your project is, that may not be necessary to have them like that, but if you want to have a square section at each end that's going to stay square as a capital and a base, uh, with a turn section in between, then it's probably best to have the, the assembled glue up to be uh, square before you start. It's probably almost critical to have it square before you start. So in this case, I am just going to glue those two together with some paper in between. So I will get some glue out here. And you use <coughs> the glue the, pr the glue to use is just ordinary carpenter's glue, not I don't know how this would work with uh, polyurethane glue or some of the other glues. But just ordinary carpenter's glue, wood glue. So I start by just 
putting a, an even coat of glue, or as even as you can get it anyway. on each piece. Now I don't want the paper to overlap, but I do want it to be tight together. And clamps. Now you really should start out with stock that's a little longer than you want your finished piece to be. And I'm just going to trim some of the excess paper. get it out of the way so I can tell a little easier. Okay, so if you've started with stock that's a little longer than it's not all that critical to have it absolutely dead even on the ends because you can trim the ends off after the glue has set up. But if you have milled your stock uh, to your finished width, then you pretty much need to get it lined up right on in terms of side to side. All right, that feels pretty good there. So I'll put another couple clamps along the length of it. I don't need real heavy duty clamps this. And one more ought to 
do it. Now, another reason for uh, <coughs> making the thing longer is it's probably a really good idea to drill some pilot holes and countersinks and put a screw across each end. Uh, to just as insurance in case the glue joint decides to fail prematurely. And I will probably do that after the glue is dried. And that also, if you, you'd be, t probably in most cases, you're going to be turning it between centers. So you're going to make a dimple in the end right on the glue joint and then the point of your spur center and the point of your tail center is going to be going into that dimple and wedging against the wood. So that can start your glue joint splitting if you, uh, if you let that happen and you don't have any extra insurance there. So I'll let that glue dry.